Hello, hello. Hey, Andre. How you doing? Oh, man. I'm happy to see you. How are you? You too. Good, man. <laughs> I like thank, the thank you. For, I, I like thank you for ghee. inviting me. I like the Yeah, ghee. I wasn't yeah. sure if it was going to be ghee or, or no ghee, so I, I, I got my, my no ghee shorts too, but... Uh, <laughs> So yeah, I'm gi up top. You know how it is in Zoom life, you know. That's it. Gi up top, no gi in the bottom. You're going to spa here like, <laughs> spa, yeah. spa on the Zoom. <laughs> First virtual, spa, virtual sparring. <laughs> yeah, Zoom sparring. That's it. <laughs> oh, Ricardo, I respect that. That's it, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I wore my, my company hat too because... I figured this would go viral, so I, you know, I want to get the exposure as well. <laughs> that's that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, <laughs> I can see. I can see the business. Business might come in in there. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, gonna hey, business minded. <laughs> oh man, that's good, man. How are you doing at the moment? How are you doing with the the lockdown thing? How is it affecting you? Um, I mean, I, I don't mind so much at all. Uh, the, the last couple of days, to be honest, I kind of like changed my mind a little bit about how I feel. I think that, you know, with time, we have more information and also we're all experiencing something new. So um, our ideas and opinions are bound to change. But certainly in the beginning, um, it, it was really nice. And, and still, it's nice now, you know, like I spent a lot of time with my family And um, there's no fear of missing out as well. Like, you know, if, you know, if it's a Saturday night and I stay home, it's like, you know, it's no big deal. I know no one else is doing anything amazing. So, um, yeah, so no FOMO and, um, you know, spending a lot of family time. In a way, it's a blessing. And the weather just seems so nice, oh, too. Like, yeah. yeah, I feel like there's less pollution and, and the sky seems bigger. So it, it hasn't been so bad. I got definitely. a nice garden. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. That's a good point. Yeah, the weather. I, I, when the weather is like this, it's just so amazing, isn't it? Like when it's rainy, it's a bit like awkward. Yeah, you have to stay indoors. But then when it's like this, it's just, uh, it's perfect. It's perfect. To be it outside. is nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel really lucky. We have a garden, and the weather's good. If it was raining and I had, a, I had a small little flat, I would probably like be a little depressed. But yeah. you know. It's That's been all right. Uh, I, I miss jujitsu, though, of course. I miss all my friends. So, yeah, I think that's that's a big part, you know. Like, uh, the, I was even talking with a cousin in Brazil today, and she was mentioned like that she was struggling because they're they just starting there. Why we here? Like we re getting ready to go back to normality eventually. There, they're just getting into the to the crisis in Brazil. Oh, the curve. They're just yeah. starting to flatten the curve. <laughs> the curve and everything. And then she mentioned, like, it's been very messing up with her head because she had to go and she has some elderly parents, so she had to go and help them out. And and I just mentioned that one of the main things is that helps, helps me level my head is the exercise. And this is quite limited. Like, I'm, I'm cycling with the kids and doing running and some workout at home, but... What I what I miss miss is the structure of the training. I think that's the main thing. But as you said, luckily we we have the good weather, the good weather. And, yeah, and, thank God for that, man. Yes. And how how is your family? Do you have family back in the states? How is your family there? Yeah, they're they're really good. Um, so uh, we're from like a, a suburb. I, I would say that it's it's very similar where I'm from in the states. It's it's called New England, and um. So, like, if uh, if Boston was London, then I would live in, like, in Epsom in New England. So, I'm from a place that's kind of, like, on the border of, like, the city and the country. So, it's a suburb, and it's about, like, an hour to get to downtown Boston, which is a, a proper city. And I kind of feel like it's it's a bit similar here. Uh, my family back home, they're all healthy, and, and, and no one's got sick. And um, mm -hmm. my family here is all healthy. So, so yes. you know, we've been. And, and how's your family too, by the way? Everyone is good here everyone and in Brazil? Good. Yeah, in Brazil as well. Everyone is good. Yeah, luckily no one's been affected. So that's a, that's a bless. Yeah, that's a bless. Oh, yeah. good. Thank God. Yeah, 
Yes, Good. yes. And, and Ilan, let's talk about a, a little bit about you, like about your, your journey. So you, okay, everybody, yeah. everybody knows you like as the American boy, like at the gym. And you come like, okay. you come in seasons. So we have a season I that do, you're yeah. there and season that you're not. So explain to us what happened with the seasons and you. Okay, yeah. So, um, so uh, my family sells Christmas trees and uh, I'm the oldest son in the family. And so I run the business uh, and I've always sold Christmas trees my whole life. And so uh, what happens is, is that every year uh, I go home for like uh, five or six months and, uh, and we sell trees and the tree season is very intense. Um, especially as we get closer to Christmas, um, from Thanksgiving to Christmas, I work like 16 to 18 hour days. Um, and, uh, that's why I'm, I'm here only part of the year. So my business, it, it's in the Boston area and, um, and yeah, typically what happens is, is I come here, uh, around January to the end of the school year. Uh, I have a daughter here. Uh, that's, okay. that's why I live here. So, uh, mama is, um, an English Rose. She's, she's from this area. And, um, so my daughter's in school here. So typically what happens is, is that, um, when the, the school that's out for summer, then, uh, we all go back to the States and then they come back when school starts and I come out for a little visit here and there. But, um, yeah. for the most part, I stick around there until, um, January. So yeah, that's that's kind of like my my strange deal. Oh, that's amazing, man! Yeah, good to know. Yeah, it's it's interesting because we, I sometimes I see you and then eventually boom, you disappear and I don't see you for a long time. It's like, oh man, where, where's he going? But then I I learned that you you go to states for a while, but I didn't know you were like like uh you had relationship with Father Christmas, but uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Santa, yeah. <laughs> And how is it there? How is the work? Cutting tree? Does it help you like physically? Oh my God. I think that uh, the Christmas trees give me like secret magical powers. So um, I know people think, oh, okay, yeah, he's just giving it all that. But no, I mean, Andre, I really truly believe that in my heart of hearts. And I can, I can tell you why, um, you know, it's kind of like, we all know that when we do an exercise, we need to breathe, right? Yes. You know, and, more control you have of your breath, you know, the better you can lift weights or do jujitsu or run or, or any activity. And the thing about the Christmas trees is they have this uh, respiratory effect. They have this like, you know, you know how it is when you're around a lot of trees, it, it helps you breathe. And so um, what happens is, is it, it kind of gives me this like systemic energy and also with the trees, like, it's a lot of heavy lifting. So from like six in the morning to like 10 at night, like we're just picking up big trees and, and bundles of wreaths and yeah. throwing them around. So um, in between like all the, the physical activity and plus like the, the chemical sort of reaction that you get from breathing in the, that, um, that feeling from the trees, it's kind of like, um, you know, airwaves gum, you ever yes. eat that, that airways yes. gum and you chew on that gum and you're like, oh my God, like my lungs are like, you know, full of air. And uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like that. So I really think that the trees are like, they give me magic powers. I know a lot of people think I'm crazy. Um, you know, they also have vitamin C. And lastly, too, the Native Americans use Christmas trees for medicinal purposes. So, I mean, you know, they knew there was something to it. And um, who knows, you know? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe Who knows? it could cure the coronavirus. I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. It's possible, though. I, I, like, I don't think it would hurt. So <laughs> we could probably look into that. That, that, would, that would be something. Yeah, because the pines, they are, they're very rich, and they use it to, to clean a lot of things, isn't it? Like using, even like a cleaning prod, products, they are based in pine. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, yeah very, very true. good point, Andre. <laughs> and we all know that you have a very particular way to exercise. So you do, you do weights, but you also do some calisthenic, calisthenic exercising. What's, how, how does it work? Yeah, so, I mean, calisthenics, and I got to tell you, man, like, 
uh, I put up you, when you see me do something on Instagram, look, let, let's be, let's be real here. That's just a highlight reel for like one cool thing I do. There's probably like 200 fails, like before I got that perfect shot. <laughs> so I, I'm going to be straight with you, bro. When it comes to calisthenics, I'm like barely a white belt, two stripes, you know, like <laughs> don't, don't believe what you see in my social media, man. Um, but I do think it's super cool. You know, I, I, I do, I do really like it. So it's something I want to get better at, but I think calisthenics, the real definition is basically like, um, any exercise you do with just your body weight. So, yeah. um, I think that's functional strength and it's something I'd like to, to continue and get better at. And I think it also transfers to jujitsu pretty well also. Definitely, yeah. It's kind of gymnastic, isn't it? And for yeah, the ones it that, is. For the ones that don't know, don't follow him on, on the Instagram yet, you, you must go and check it out. Because the other day, he was doing an exercise. He was doing like a, a handstand. And then a girl was behind him, like pretend that she was just looking and she was like recording with her phone <laughs> just behind you. Oh, yeah. I saw, yeah, I didn't even know that you guys pointed that out. So, yeah. Yeah, I was... I was waiting in the in the social distance line at the supermarket and it wasn't moving anywhere and there was like a bike rack in front so I was like <laughs> I'm going to fool around so that's it and I just noticed it I saw it I just saw the girl she was pretending that she was searching something on her phone but she was actually recording you doing the exercise or like oh, yeah so, yeah that like, was <laughs> uh, yeah I was flattered and and how how did your journey with uh, martial arts started uh Ilan okay well I think the the first martial arts I did was karate So, uh, when I was a kid, um, like the karate kid was a big deal. Uh, so, you know, I was born in the early seventies and, uh, you know, um, when I, when I was like 10 or something, the karate kid came out and, and that was like the thing. So I did karate for two years. Um, but I, uh, I remember I got in a fight, like a real fight and I like tried to do like some karate moves and stuff and, and uh, and like, I got, I got beat up real bad. And so yeah, I was like age 12 or something. So then I was like, man, this, this cry is bullshit. Right. <laughs> so I stopped doing karate and, um, and then, uh, in high school I started wrestling. So, um, where I'm from, uh, they have wrestling in the schools, which I, I'm very grateful for. So I did that and, um, and I really enjoyed that. So I, I still have a record for wrestling in my school to this day. Wow, that's amazing, yeah. That's very no, good. it's for, not really. It's for the most losses, <laughs> so it's not really a record I should brag about. But, um, you know, hey, I tried, and that's what counts, man. So, <laughs> it's still a record, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is a record, so. and, but and yeah, I know, well, I know in your holidays, you also had a relationship like a friendship with um. UFC fighter. Tell us about that. How, how did it happen? Oh, yeah. So um, I, uh, I went to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. So I went to university there. And so I lived in Las Vegas and uh, I bought my first house there. And uh, I didn't know it at the time. But uh, like the day after I moved in, I met my neighbors. And uh, the guy who lived across the street from me at the time was the UFC heavyweight champion. His name was Rico Rodriguez, and um, he, we became best mates. Um, I don't know if you know anything about Rico, but, like, let's just say, like, he liked to live large. You know, he was a real character, super likable guy, a bit on the wild side, though, man. Uh, uh, maybe more than a bit on the wild side, but, uh, yeah, uh, we became fast friends, and uh, I was, like, his little buddy, even though, like, I think I was two years older than him. Um, but you know, he was just, you know, really large person and, uh, <laughs> and yeah, so, um, so yeah, we used to get in all kinds of, uh, shenanigans together to say the least. <laughs> and then what's happened when you, when you, I heard that you got a picture with him in the social media and it was like very, Oh no, that's a, that's something different. That's, that's a, that's something different. So, um, 
okay, um, okay. So <laughs> one time, like I went, like I go to Las Vegas every so often because I have a lot of friends there. Uh, I worked there for a long time, and um, one time I went there and I went and trained at uh, Drysdale Academy. So, um, so it was a really tough club. Not as t- not as tough as Nova Forsa. Nova Forsa is the toughest club yeah. I've ever <laughs> been to, and I've been to quite a few when I travel. So, um, anyways, I went to the Drysdale Club, and it was a, a no gi class. And um, you know, in in no gi, when you go somewhere new, you, you know, well, first of all, you don't know what belt anybody is because they're all mm. like no gi. You know what I'm saying? And then um, also, like, I didn't know I didn't know anyone, so. But, you know, when you go to a new club to train, like, let's face it, man, like, you're kind of like fresh meat, you know? <laughs> like, everybody wants to, like, prove, like, you know, like, hey, uh, you're the outsider, you know, this is our club. And, and I was only there for, like, you know, two weeks, you know? So, like, I was just, like, a guest. And uh, anyways, um, what happened was um, this guy, it's like, this dude, he was really, like, intimidating, right? And he was, like, he had, like, he was, like, like you could tell right away he was on steroids, man. Right. And like, he was like, he had like, like full sleeves and like, you know, huge, like veiny muscles. Like really like, you know, really knew he was juiced out. And, uh, so it was like a no, it was time to spar. Right. And, uh, and he's like pointed at me. He's like, Hey, you, he's like, uh, let's spar. Right. And I, I honestly, Andre, I was pretty nervous, man. You know, like I thought this guy, this guy looks pretty rough, you know, but, uh, it turned out that, uh, actually he wasn't that tough at all. He was kind of like a sucker for all my moves. Right. So like, like I, I tapped him like three or four times. Right. And he was pissed, man. He was pissed. Right. So then after, after that round, right. I saw him like, he wouldn't even, he didn't want to shake my hand or nothing. Like he just, like, as soon as, like, the bell rang, he got up, and he, like, went to the other side of, like, you know, and there was this other dude there that looked really menacing as well, right? And I could see him, and he was pointing at me, and he was, like, you know, making, like, a mean mugging, and, uh, you know, and they were talking, and then the guy you're talking to comes over to me and goes, all right, now you're going to fight me, right? So, man, I was, I was really nervous, right? And so I was sparring with this guy, man, and I thought he wanted to kill me, and I was trying super hard, you know? And then, like, halfway through the fight, I realized, like, I know this dude. This is War Machine. I don't know if you remember <laughs> War Machine. <laughs> yes, yes. So it was, it was War Machine. I recognized him because he had, like, a grenade tattoo uh, on his neck. And uh, I'm like, hey, you're a War Machine. And up until that point, I was doing pretty good. And then as soon as, like, I realized, like, this guy's like a UFC fighter. Like, I was <laughs> I was really nervous, you know, and uh, he got my back, but I tell you what, bro, he couldn't tap me. He kind of beat the shit out of me, but he couldn't tap me, right? <laughs> I was really pleased with myself. And so, like, after the sparring match, like, he's like, you know, you're all right, man. He's like, good match. And I was like, dude, you're War Machine. I was like, can I have my picture with you? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> so then, like, I took a picture of War Machine, like, my arm around him, and then we both were, like, doing, like, the fist, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. And then... Like two days later, he went on like some steroid rampage and he like raped his girlfriend and then he like beat up a couple guys, like almost killed him. And uh, he became like public enemy number one. And uh, I think he's doing like five like life sentences right now. And so uh, I was like, I think I should take that picture down off of social media. So I, I had to take that photo down. And that was, that was like a best and worst moment, you know. I hope you were not wearing your hat there because then it would be like a ruin for your that business. That would be bad, bad publicity, <laughs> yeah. So, Man, yeah. And you said about Nova Forza there, they just put that Justin, the guy was pretty much like Justin, the scary guy. So after you did so, some uh, uh, training strength with, uh, with Justin, a- anyone would be like uh, not as scary for you. Oh, Justin would have smashed those guys, man. <laughs> I, I I know what Justin feels like. I know what those guys feel like. J- Justin would smash those guys, man, for <laughs> sure. It. The bastard yeah. pass. He would, yeah, he would smash them. <laughs> and 
from uh from a gi or no gi which one do you like most Elon you prefer train with the gi or no gi honestly uh i would say i like them both equal man like you know i i'm a wrestler so in the beginning like there was you know i i kind of resisted the gi because i was like you know what is this and uh i just i just didn't know you know but what 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 changed in my mind was when i realized that you could make the gi a weapon that's when i was like oh this is pretty cool so from that point forward like suddenly like i i i love gi and no gi just the same i just i just love jiu jitsu man i just love it you know gi no gi man i i don't care if we fight in a suit like i just <laughs> think it's great man yeah that's cool man that's cool and you said you mentioned also about the training that you've been to many different gyms uh what's the the difference between some of the gyms you went and and Nova Force so what the difference you you oh. find Okay, so I mean when I'm in the states, I have one club that I go to and when I'm here, I I only train Nova Forza, but you know, I I travel a lot, you know, so I travel for work. So I mean, I go to Canada for work a lot. So when I go, you know, sometimes I I like to, you know, go to like a local club and just um and just like, you know, train there. Um so like some clubs are really tough and then other clubs, I call them like Mick Dojos, you know. So like uh I remember like the worst i think were like in australia like i went to australia in like 2014 and 2015 and i i went and, and went to a couple clubs like maybe three or four clubs like check them out man like the instructors were like kittens man i mean they're like black belts like they're supposed to smash me you know what i mean and they were like they were like white belts man so i mean it 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 can go like you know it can you some clubs are tough some aren't i mean it, yeah. i guess it just depends man it depends yeah and also the style though, i think it's uh, i i that's what i always say like nova forza is like proper brazilian jiu jitsu roots that you can see the proper. training yeah that's well, lot I, you know what i could sense it the first day i went there like like i knew it right away and i was like well oh, th- this is this is this is the club i want to i want to be a part of That's it. Yeah. To be honest, when I went there and then I sparred with I had like this spine, then everybody was smashing me and then you uh, you came to spar with me and you said, "Andre, shall we do like this? I do one position and then you do the, another position and then you do" and I said, "Oh my god, that's heaven." <laughs> I was being smashed like all the way through and I said, "At least someone going to give me a breather." Here. And then okay, let's do. You do one position because I I was like eight years without training. And then when I step in I didn't remember anything it was like I on my head I thought I could do things but my body wasn't just not reacting to my thoughts you know so then you came and said Andrea let's do like that you do one move and then I do another move and then my ma- my mind was working and I could think about my my body and I was like oh that was like whoa that was the best I went home and I said oh that was the best sparring of the night <laughs> Oh good man good man that really helps me like try to like get get my brain in you know cuz yeah. sometimes like I I can't think you know so yeah that's yeah. what I felt because well, for me I wasn't I was like eight years without training so I, I knew the positions but I just couldn't perform them anymore my body wasn't moving so I everything I learned I just kind of I knew in my head but I couldn't do it anymore it was just like a So I was once you you we start to say Andre what you would do this one what is it and then it really made my my head start to think in jiu jitsu again but before I was just being like everybody was like a tractor fresh meat I was like oh. yeah man yeah whenever you're new everybody wants a piece of you you know <laughs> that's it but that is that's it what doesn't kill you make you stronger that's the thing <laughs> yeah And man they just we just had a question here. They said if because of your background in wrestling uh if you prefer fights from the top instead of the bottom or you change you you change over. Man, I I got to tell you like uh, for na- naturally like like as a wrestler like they teach you top game, right? Like you never go on your back as a wrestler cuz that's how you lose. You get pinned. So uh, if I if I went on my back in a wrestling match I would lose. So it's kind of hard to like turn that off, you know, especially 
I think w when you learn something as a kid, like it's kind of really like in your brain, you know, like, um, so it's kind of hard to turn that off, but, um, I, I mean, I wish my bottom game was better. It's something that, that I really need to improve. And I, I want to be the first to admit that, that it's, it needs a lot of adjustment to say the least. So, um, I probably prefer to play top because it, it's intuitive to me, but I, I equally understand how important and significant it is to jujitsu to be good at both the top and the bottom. So I think they're, they're, they're both equally as important, you know? Yes. Yes. And, uh, I know you're very good in jujitsu, but have you ever done any MMA or how, how is, have you ever done no. any boxing or kickboxing? Oh, n not really, man. Like I've taken some Muay Thai classes with Nova Forza, uh, but uh, that, um, with the exception of like some street fights, uh, <laughs> I really haven't thrown too many strikes in my life. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not an MMA guy, man. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes. That's... Oh. Sorry, someone just interrupted us. How oh. rude. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, man. And do you follow BJJ like uh, prof like any videos or any fighter? Do you have anyone that you inspire inspires you? Yeah, uh, I do, man. I mean, I go through stages. Like sometimes I'll obsess, you know, and uh, I'll, I'll watch like you know a million YouTube videos, you know, in a day. Um, and uh, and then you know sometimes I'll like take a break. But uh, let's see, guys that I like to watch. Uh, Well, uh, I like to watch that guy, uh, Rustam. Do you know him? He's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, They call yeah. him the Russian bear. <laughs> yes, like, yeah. he, I think he's from, like, Dagestan or, or something. He, he's, like, he, he's from that, that Chechnya sort of area. <laughs> And uh, I love his style, man. He, you know, he, he, uh, He's got like a real, he's got kind of a wrestling base, you know, so I like that because I feel like I can relate to it a little bit more. So he's, he's probably my favorite guy to watch is, is Rustam. And what about competitions, Ilan? What's your, I know. I think competitions are like, are, are, uh, absolutely, uh, fundamental to, to growth in BJJ. Um, I think that I, I need to practice what I preach and do more competitions Uh, I, uh, I used to do a lot more. I haven't done any for a couple years now. Um, I could give you an excuse, but really that's what it is, is it's an excuse because I mean, you can always find time, especially for something that you're passionate about. So, um, but I, I, I do like to compete. Um, I think that, um, someone once told me, and I really believe it, that every competition you do is worth like three months on the mat. And I think that's true, you know, so, you know, you do, you do four competitions. That's like a, a year's worth of jujitsu, right? Yes, yeah. I mean, I, I really think it's true. And, and the reason why I think it's true is because like in competition, you find out what works and what doesn't work. You know, yes, yeah. it's the ultimate test. Yeah. Yeah. And under pressure as well. It's just like when you're under pressure, then it really yeah. it makes the difference. Isn't it? And I know you have some great memories of competitions. You had some, gold medals uh, on your CV and <laughs> yeah yeah so I, I am proud to say that uh, I got the first Nova Forza uh, gold medals in the United States yeah. so I got a uh, I did a grapplers quest match in uh, and I, I won gold in gi and no gi Whoa, so that was that was I got the double gold man I was really happy about that that yeah. was that was one of the best days uh, so that was a really good day um, but you know um Also, I uh, humiliated myself uh, in front of all my friends in competition, too. So, um, you know, you got to take a good with the bad. So uh, there was a, a competition in Surrey, and I managed to uh, talk my way in at the last minute. And um, I was doing an absolute match. And uh, I was up on points probably like, I don't know, I think I was winning like 18 to 2 or wow. like 16 to nothing. And uh, I was I was really in the zone, man. And I was I was getting a little cocky. And um, this guy put a choke on me, 
uh, when I was inside his guard, and I was like, that choke ain't on, man. And, and then I woke up in front of all my friends. You know, I, 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 I fell asleep. So, you know, it was oh, – that's, that's, that's jiu-jitsu, man. It's jiu-jitsu. very humbling. Yeah, it happens so, to everybody. That's it. Yeah, man. <laughs> that's it. It's lift but don't tap. That's the thing, isn't it? I have, I have some experience. Yeah. Todd is there. Todd knows that uh, Ash as well. I had like a couple of spears, experience at the gym, but I didn't tap. And then from a moment, I thought, no, everything's going to be all right. And then suddenly just like, boom, stars and then gone. <laughs> yeah, I, man, I, I, like, I, I remember like, I remember the moment before I passed out in, 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 that, in that competition. And I remember like thinking like, this is great. Like I'm just killing him and I'm showing off in front of all my friends. Like I did like reverse mount and I was doing all my crazy moves and stuff, you know? And, uh, and then I remember he put the choke on and I remember thinking, well, I've been in this situation before that choke never works on me. And then that was like my last thought. And then, and then I woke up, man. So yeah, you gotta respect the art, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's That's it. He's just finished when it finished. And uh, yeah, man, there's a, there's a question that we always ask here about the, the there's a question here about the club, the club fight. So if there's a fight in the club, you have to pick three guys oh. from Nova Force that will help you. Cannot be, be Rick, cannot be Justin, or cannot be Baker. So who would be the three ones that you would call them to help you? Oh yeah. Okay. So I, I went for a run before the, before this podcast and I was, I was thinking about that and um, okay. So, so here's my, my three, right? The first one is uh big Steve. I don't know if you know, uh, big Steve, he was with the club for a while, but then he got it. He, he hurt his knees. So he, he stopped doing jujitsu. I don't know if you, if you ever met him, but no. I mean, the dude's like, he, he looks like one of those guys from like that movie 300. Right. I mean, he's just like massive, like jacked up, like Barton kind of guy. So, so Steve, cause he could just, you know, kick some serious ass. And then the next guy I was thinking was, was Jarvis, right? Ooh, cause I, Jarvis is a proper gangster, man. I got a lot of respect for Jarvis. I think that uh, Jarvis wouldn't shy away from a street fight and he'd do what needed to be done. So that's, there's two reasons actually for Jarvis, but that's the first reason. And then the third person would be Jess, right? Uh, for two reasons as well. Why? The first reason is because, uh, because like Jess is a girl. So like, maybe like people wouldn't like, like, you know, fight her and she could just like, you know, get some shots in. But the other reason, right. Is because I was thinking about what happens after the fight. Right. So I was thinking about like, you know, after the fight's over, when the police show up, right? If they see like me and a uh, 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 Asian girl and a Jamaican guy, right? And there's a fight, that'd be like a hate crime, right? So like, they'd be like, oh, these guys are innocent, right? We, we'll, we'll take them away. So that, that's my reason. That's it. Three points for Jess. Jess, Jess is leading Todd. You better be careful. Jess has been three, three. We had three votes for Jess so far. So that's amazing. No, really? Three votes for Jess already? Oh, I, I thought I was being original. Damn, man. Jess is I really do my homework. <laughs> oh, oh. Man. <laughs> that's good, Elon. That's good. Man. Yeah. We have another class question as well about the tapping because someone is very disgusting, like or smelling or sweating too much, or like putting oh. like putting you in a position that is it's uncomfortable, but not like a submission position. So have you ever it ever happened with you? Oh, yeah, man. Like, someone, like, has bad, like, B.O. And then, like, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's happened, man. I mean, uh, I hope I'm not that guy. Like, I, I shower before I go to jiu-jitsu, like, every time because I don't want to be that guy, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's – I'll just tap, dude. I mean, like, I, don't, I don't care, you know. Yeah. Like, if it's, like, super gross, I'll be like, oh, man, my tap, you went. Yeah. That's it. We're quite lucky at Nova Force, to be honest. It's just like a, it's a, it's a good club in both ways. 
Yeah, I would say we have good hygiene over there. Yeah, it's not, the stand is good. <laughs> That's it, Ilan. Ilan, one more question here. We have a question uh, from Marcus. Marcus said, what are you thinking when you do this extremely warm-ups that you do when you do it with us at the gym? What's your intention? Do you want to kill everybody? Oh, um, I, you know, man, I don't really think they're that extreme. Like in the beginning, like when I first joined Nova Forza, like yeah. that was what every workout was like. Like every, every class started that way. So I'm just trying to like keep the tradition. Yes, it's like the, the ball buster warm up, they call it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, man. Brother, thank you so much, man. It was, was, was amazing. In the time, the It's time my pleasure, through, man. You went super fast, and you, 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 we could talk for another hour here, man. You're so great. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you, man. Thanks for, th thanks for having me, man. I, uh, I, I really appreciate it, and I just want to say uh, thank you to everyone in, uh, in Nova Forza, man. Like, uh, I, 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 I just I love everyone, and, and uh, I'm really grateful for the club, and uh, I just feel super blessed to have – Uh, the club and all the friends I've made there. So, so thank you, Andre, and thank you, Nova Forza, and thank you, Rick, and thank you, everyone. Oh man, thank you so much. Ibron just came here. He will need to to watch the replay of the of the the live because he's asking about the the competition in Surrey. So he already told oh. us about that, Ibron. But you have to to watch the the beginning later. <laughs> but he I think Ibron was there, man. Yeah, Ibron. He I think he saw and he, I think he saw me take a nap on the mat, man. So <laughs> he said that. He said, "Man, thank you so much, and you're you're a great, great guy, really, a brother. We really thankful to have you on the team." It's a, it's okay, amazing. man. Pleasure's mine. It's it's always been, man. So yeah, I mean, you guys saved my life, and uh, you know, you just just you know, I'm I'm a I'm a foreigner in this country, and, and I, I came here, and I and I found people that made me feel at home. So I mean, uh, what else could a guy ask for? That's good, man. Thank you, thank you so much, man. And keep safe. My pleasure. And keep in touch. Thank keep, you, man. Keep in touch and keep watching us. Thank you, everyone that's uh, watching us here. Nova okay, peace. I got team. my Nova Forza mug and my <laughs> See you, man. Thank you, bro. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Have a lovely evening, everybody. Cheers. Thank Bye, you. everyone. <laughs>